If you've been through downtown Grand Rapids in the past week or so, you've probably noticed that a lot of murals are beginning to pop up pretty much everywhere. Yeah, local artists have painted hundreds of them and boarded up windows. Our Michael Martin met the people who brought together that group that did it. Yeah, guys, it's a, a new Grand Rapids down here. Almost two weeks ago that these sidewalks were lined with debris and broken glass. But the very next day, the people of Grand Rapids came out, clean up and to board up some of these damaged storefronts. And now a group of local artists, rather than leaving them up as a sign of the destruction, are turning them into temporary pieces of art. The peaceful protest happened, then a riot happened, then it was, you know, the narrative got convoluted in between those two things. The riot in downtown Grand Rapids that followed that peaceful protest left the city reeling. Hundreds of windows left smashed out, storefronts decimated. What is next was everybody's question when they woke up, so this is what's next. Hannah Berry, owner of Grand Rapids art space Lions and Rabbits, helped organize a project to beautify the now boarded up windows, putting a call out for artists interested in the cause. 230 artists have applied for the call. We closed the call a couple days ago because it's too many people. When we were doing the math today and like looking up the numbers, there's 93 windows right now for sure that are painted by people of color, 53 painted by white people. So it's been a really good way to see the community come together in a different way than downtown usually looks. Looks. One of those artists, Jasmine Bruce, who's lived her whole life right here in Grand Rapids. I'm doing a window mural, temporary window mural on lions and rabbits in Creston neighborhood. Um, with that piece, I really wanted to make a memorial for all of the um, people who have faced or victims of police brutality. And I'm planning on including as many portraits as I can, but also emphasizing the fact that you can include them all because there's so many um, people, black people that have faced that um, travesty. She says the project is already sparking productive conversation. Using art down here, we've had, we've been able to have those dynamic and uncomfortable conversations with people as far as whether they want us to paint on their buildings or not, um, or how they're thinking. <laughs> Erin Oderkirk, who owns the dog pit on Monroe Center with her husband, was out the day after the riot making hot dogs for everyone helping them clean up. I had so many emotions the night of the riot and the next day. Like, literally, um, I didn't know I could experience so many emotions at once. She says she was overwhelmed when artists came by later in the week to paint the front of her restaurant. And so then to see them here doing this, I was... It just was so heartwarming and again, I don't, I didn't know him. I don't know him, you know, and he's here painting our windows and making us look okay again. Organizers say while the project has come together quickly, nothing is happening without careful forethought. It happened in a weekend, you know, it needed to happen in a weekend and things will grow from it and things happen that were bad and things happen that were good, but the intention and the purpose behind it is it's like you can't, unbreakable. Yeah, and Barry told me today that the Grand Rapids Art Museum has actually already reached out to them looking to buy some of these mural pieces to preserve this moment in history. For more information about the project, check out our web article at fox17online.com. For now, though, live in downtown Grand Rapids, Michael Martin, Fox 17 News. Yeah, and it's uh, just the same message that the protesters carry themselves now sticking around downtown. Yeah. Love seeing those vibrant pieces of art, don't you? Yeah, no question.